Welcome to pre-algebra. This is lesson 2-7, more properties of integer exponents. Last lesson, we learned about some properties of integer exponents. Today, we're going to learn more properties of integer exponents. From this lesson, you'll be able to simplify expressions with negative and zero exponents. And also, you will evaluate expressions with negative and zero exponents. And so you also write a number with a negative or zero exponent in a different way. Let's look at this, this explore it. Calvin and Mike do sit-ups when they work out. They start with 64 sit-ups for the first set and do half as many each subsequent set. Let's look for relationships. Determine whether the relationship shown for set one is also true for sets two um, dash five, two or five, right? So um, thinking about that, let's answer these questions in parts A and B. Part A, what representation can you use to show the relationship between the set number and the number of setups? What do you know about Calvin and Mike? They start with 64 sit-ups for the first set and then do half as many each subsequent set. So the next set, second set, they'll do half as many 60 of 64 sit-ups. So that's 32. And then the next set, the third set, would be half of 32, right? Half of the second one. So first, let's represent using numbers to show the relationship between the set and number and the number of sit-ups. Um, you can first write down the explanation and we'll write down the expression. They start with 64 sit-ups. So that's um, their first. Okay. And second set, they do half as many, so 32. Third set, half as many as the previous one, 16. Fourth set, they do eight and so on, right? Oh, my table is a little bit flying. But you can say you made a table to show the number of setups in each set. And each set has, a half, has half the number of setups as the previous set. The relationship should be two to one. So if you start with two, you get one the next time. The pattern you see is dividing all the numbers by two. So let's write that down. Okay. Okay, let's save the relationship part for part B. What conclusion can you make about the relationship between the number of sit-ups in each set? You know the number of sit-ups will always be half as many as the previous set with the number of sit-ups in a set um, until the number of sit-ups in a set is one, just one, right? You just keep dividing it by two until you get to one. So how many sets? You can keep drawing the table until you see the end. Fifth one would be four. Sixth one will be two. And seventh one would be finally one. So in total, they do seven sets of setups, right? So let's write the relationship down. Okay. And also, the relationship is two to one, like we talked about it before. The pattern is to divide the numbers by one. I mean by two, okay? So let's 
So our conclusion is that they have a relationship between the set and the number of setups and the relationship is two to one. You keep dividing the number by two. All right, let's focus on math practices. How could you determine the number of setups, setup sets Calvin and Mike do? How do you determine it? How did you figure out the numbers? Can you use the exponents to figure it out? If you're dividing it by the same number, would there be an exponent that would, that would tell you how many times you need to divide it by? Because you know that the bigger the power gets, you're multiplying the same number by that many times, right? Or you can determine which power of two is equal to the number of setups. So if you subtract the power from seven, that is the set number for those setups, right? Let's write that down, okay? So if you know the number of setups, like four, right? What set number would that be for? Just knowing the fact that you started with 64 in your first set. You would count how many times you divided two by, right? Um, which is pretty much counting which power of two is equal to the number of setups. And then you subtract the power from seven because that's the total set. And so that would be your set number for those setups, okay? Let's think about the essential question throughout the lesson. What did a zero exponent and negative exponent properties mean? Ooh, that question already gives out the hint that we're gonna learn something called the zero exponent and negative exponent properties, right? Example one is about the zero exponent property. Marcella is playing a card matching game with some classmates. Four classmates have been made. It is Marcella's turn and she chooses three to the zero of power. What card would complete her match? Ooh, all of the cards, all of the cards on the table, she chose three to the zero of power. What would that be equal to, right? Think about your powers. Three to three square is three times three. Three cube is three times three times three, right? So that's nine and that's 27. What about three times one? you multiply three once. So that's three, right? What about three to the zero power? You multiply three zero times. So does that mean three to the zero power is equal to zero or is it equal to something else? Let's think about decreasing number in the powers. Let's start looking at 27, okay? From 27, we're gonna think backwards today. From 27, what do you have to do in order to get to the number nine, the previous step? You divide by three. Do you see that? Because you multiply by three, the inverse operation of that would be three if you wanna go backwards and use the inverse operation. Right? From nine, you also divide by three in order to get three. So backwards, when your power is decreasing, subtract it by one. That means you do the opposite of multiplying the number, which is dividing the number. So from three, you divide by three again. That's the pattern here, right? What's three divided by three? One, it is not zero, it is one, okay? So that is called a zero exponent property. Any number to the zero power 
is one because any number divided by itself is going to be one, okay? So the zero exponent property states that any number a to the zero power is equal to one, assuming that a is not zero. If it's zero, it's gonna be zero. Let's try these problems, A, B, C, and D. What are these numbers? Negative seven, the whole thing, negative seven to the zero power. That's one. 43 to the zero power. That's one. One to the zero power, one, and 0 0.5 to the zero power is one as well. Any number, it does not matter if it's negative, positive, unless it's not zero. Any number is going to be one if it has a power of zero. Convince me, why is two times seven to the zero power equals one? What do we know? What did we just learn? The zero exponent property. The zero exponent property says that any number to the power of zero is equal to one. So be careful not to just combine two and seven together and say, oh, that's gonna be 14 to the zero power. No, not correct. There's a parentheses for a reason. You need to solve the power first, okay? So that is really seven to the zero power times two. 7 to the 0 power is 1, okay? And so 2 times 1 is 2 by the 0 exponent property, okay? It is not 2 times 7 to the 0 power. Okay. All right. Next page, page 129. Example two, the negative exponent property. Okay, let's simplify the expression four to the third power divided by four to the fifth power. Okay, so four to the third power divided by four to the fifth power could be written as fraction like that, right? Let's multiply them out so that we see how many fours are divided by how many fours. Three fours multiplied in the numerator and five fours multiplied in the denominator. You can cross each fours out from the numerator and denominator. So so that they become one, right? Four over four is one. So we got one up here and we got four times four in the bottom, okay? So what's happening? We already learned that if you have a division for exponents, you can subtract your powers. But what if you get a negative power? That's also, equal to four to the negative two power, right? Ooh, this is called, that's what well, we just use the quotient of power's property, right? But this is called the negative exponent property where this and this equals to the same thing because we didn't change the expression. We're just understanding it in a different way and expressing it in a different way. So one over four square is also going to be equal to four to the negative two square, okay? So in this sense, negative in the power actually means not multiplication, but division. So if you have a negative power, it doesn't mean you're multiplying negative numbers. Does it not? If you have negative in the power, that means it is not multiplication. You divide by two times, right? Divide the number, divide the base. In this case, four. Divide the base twice, or how many times the number is. 
Okay, so let's try these questions, A, B, and C. A to the negative second power, two to the negative fourth power, three to the negative fifth power. They're all negative exponents. We're gonna write these expressions using positive exponents. Okay, we don't want negative exponents. How do we do that? We know that negative uh, powers means you divide the base by how many times the power is, right? So a to the negative second power means you divide eight twice. So you're gonna move eight from the numerator to the denominator and then make it a positive power. Your power does not go away. You can't just move the base and be done. Your power stays with it. Your um, opposite number would be the power when you flip the fraction to a reciprocal, okay? Part B, two to the negative fourth power. Flip the fraction, make the power into positive, one over two to the fourth power. Part C, three to the negative fifth power would be one over three to the fifth power. Or you may also be wondering, can we write this as um, a, a power with the parentheses? You can also write this as one over eight parentheses to the second power, okay? Because one square is one, if you divide, if you multiply the fractions, that means you're dividing it, okay? So this also works, they're the same expressions. All right, example three, expressions with negative exponents. Write the expression one over seven to the negative three with a positive exponent. What if there's a negative power in the denominator. What does that mean? Use the negative exponent property and think about, oh, seven to the negative third power really means one over seven to the third power. But well, we got fraction and fraction, what does that mean? Well, your fraction bar means divide. So you're dividing one divided by one divided by seven to the third power, okay? Can you change that to multiplication? Yes, Respi using reciprocal, right? One times one times one over seven to the third power. Or, sorry, one times one to the one over seven to the third power, okay? And so that is going to be Oh, wait. Okay. That's one divided by one, divided, but this is parenthesized, yeah. So you have to have this as a fraction, actually. So if you want to change division into multiplication, you have to have a reciprocal. So then you have seven to the third power. So one over seven to the negative third power really means you flip the fraction and make it positive again, the power, right? The power becomes the opposite number when you make a reciprocal of it. That is also the negative exponent property. It goes both ways doesn't matter if your negative power is in the numerator or the denominator. Okay, let's try parts A and B. Write each expression using positive exponents. Come back when you're ready. Okay, that's 5 thirds, that's 2 to the 6 because you flip the fraction and make it positive. Right, so today we learned about zero exponent property and negative exponent property. I'll see you next lesson. Bye.